Lesson 33, Subtraction Using Compound Complementary Numbers in the Hundreds Column. This is going to be the last lesson of the Abacus series. After this, you will have learned everything that you need to know to add any number, to add or subtract any number on the Abacus. And this, this lesson, it's not even really going to help you do it. You already know the principle. You already know what you need to do. But we're just keeping in sequence with what we've done in the past. So we, we're going to do the hundreds column nonetheless to give you just a little bit more practice. Let's do 872 minus 216. All right, so set the number 872 on your abacus. There's an 8, there's a 7, and there's a 2. 872, and we are going to subtract from that the number 216. Start over here. Get rid of that. There's the 2 of two, 216. We take away 1 here. Oh, that was a piece of cake. This is an easy problem. 6. All right, here, here's the compound. All right, we need to take away 6 from this. That means I go bang, bang, bang. Oh, what am I left with? A two. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's two beats. What am I left with? A six, a five, and a six. So 656. 872 minus 216 is 656. All right, let's do another problem. Set the number 683 on your abacus. 683. So let's do 683 minus 126. All right, so we start over here in the hundreds column. And we're going to take away one there. Take away two here. There's the one and the two of 126. And we need to take away six here. Oh, yeah, not enough beads. Uh, it triggers your thinking on the compound complementary numbers, and we go bang, bang, bang. Ooh, I like doing that. Yeah. All right, and what are we left with? A 5, a 5, and a 7. 557. So 683 minus 126 is 557. All right, let's do the next one. Set the number 791 on your abacus. A 7, a 9, and a 1. There it is, 791. And we're going to subtract the same number. We're going to subtract 126 from that. So 791 minus 126. So I take away 1. I take away 2. And I take away 6. Oh, yeah, there we go. I'm a pro by, by now. Oh, yeah, that feels good. And we, we are left with a 6 in the hundreds, a 6 in the tens, and a 5 in the ones. And we say that number 665. All right. Let's do one, maybe two more of these. 231 minus 180. A 2, a 3, and a 1. Here we go. And we are going to subtract from that the number 180. So I take away 1 here. And I take away an 8 here. Ooh, yeah. Oh, I think. Oh, yeah. I can, I can handle this. I can handle this. Bang, bang, bang. Yeah, yeah, I can handle that. And I need to take away a 0. Oh, yeah. There's not really anything to do with it. Because 180 in the 1's column, it's a 0. So I don't do anything there. There, there's my answer, a 5 and a 1. 231 minus 180 is 51. All right, let's do one more. Let's do a big number. Um, let's do like 914. A 9, a 1, and a 4. It's a lot of beads on there. 914 minus 5. 508. 508. 508. So 914 minus 508. 
So I start over here and I take away five. Okay, yeah, I can do that. Bang. I can handle that. And 508. Oh, there's a zero in the tens column. That means I don't do anything there right now. All right, and I move on to the ones column. I need to take away eight here. All right. I can do this. Looks like that. All right. What am I left with? I have a four. I have a zero. And I have a six. So 914 minus 508 is 406. 406. 406. All right. That is as far as we're going in this series of lessons with the abacus. Now there's more that you can do with the abacus. You can actually, you can, you can multiply and divide on it. You can do lots with it. But the, the extent that we're going to go into in this lesson is learning how to add and subtract. Now once again, in conclusion of adding and subtracting on the abacus, basic math, You've learned everything that you need to know to add and subtract any number. And again, the best way to do that is to just make up random numbers and practice them. Just go through it. Just make up problems for yourself. Um, it's a fun way. I don't know. It makes it more fun. Whatever you're doing where it's going to inv involve adding and subtracting numbers, maybe have your abacus handy so you can go through it. That's the best way to do that. And remember that principle that I told you about a couple lessons ago, that one of the things that we're doing here is working hard at practicing now, doing lots of problems, that you're doing all your thinking now so that you don't have to think about it later on. Or you're, it's not that you're not thinking about it, it's that you're so, your brain has become so advanced in that one thing that it feels like you're not thinking. It, is, it has become so good that it doesn't have to think about it. And that's what it is when you're learning something. In the beginning, you have to think a lot. But when you practice it and become proficient at it, it you get to the point where your brain has become so advanced in that one thing that it feels like it's not even thinking at all. So do that with the, with the abacus here. Become so good at it. Do all your thinking now, and I, it'll, it'll stretch your brain. It'll be hard. But eventually you'll get to that point. And I want you to remember this principle. Remember this point when it was hard. You'll get to some point in your life where you're doing something that is hard again, and you'll feel like you want to give up. And you know what? You can think back to this moment when the abacus was hard and say, well, you know what? I eventually got to the point where I could figure out the abacus. I got to the point where it became so easy that I defeated it that it wasn't even hard anymore. And you can apply that to that future hard thing, and you'll know when you're starting to get it. You'll know when, you can, when, you're st when your brain is starting to get it, and you'll know when you've conquered it, because y you've learned that process through learning the abacus. That's one of the things that I want to get. You're not just learning the abacus. You're learning how to conquer hard things. That's what I like about this. That maybe at some future point, you might want to dig out your abacus and just finger through a, a few numbers and say, yeah, I still got it. I can do hard things. I can do bit better things. I can do bigger things. Hard things to me will eventually become thoughtless and easy and second nature. Just like breathing, just like thinking, just like anything like that. That's what I like about the abacus. So stick with it until it becomes easy with you. Y you know, because honestly, you may never really use the abacus in your life in a useful setting because we have better tools. We have computers. That's the thing. But the thing that you learned by doing the abacus is important. You learned to conquer something hard. And that's what's important here.